Welcome, Welcome to, to Unhinged Magi! Ah, uh, that's right. You get all your information from us and don't watch anything else and you're on the right channel. Yeah, yep. that's pretty much how that works. Yep. yep. Only come here because we have the best information. It's shiny information. It is tasty information. It is full of opinions and just garbage as that's well. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So we cover it all. We'll lie to you. We'll tell you the truth. Well, then lie to you again and then tell you the truth. And you won't know what to talk about. You won't know which, which way is up. And it's all garbage. And there you go. There you go. Okay. Bye, all everybody. Right, bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we have, there's, there's news to talk about. We're not the first ones to break this story. But, of course, we're full of opinions. Yes. So let's show you guys what the big dealio yo is here. Over on the Flesh and Blood website, they have this nifty little post they just put up here. Arcane Rising going out, out of, of print. print. And then when you actually look at it, yes, indeed, Arcane Rising Unlimited is officially out of print. Da, 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 da. And then they talk about how you know cards will show up in other sets, and then they show this Arcanite skullcap that yep. they never directly tell you is going to be in other sets, but, I mean, they're showing it to you here, so, I mean, I guess... It's that's... safely to assume that that's going to show up in another set, yeah. which is good because it's in high demand. Yeah, that's a pretty good implication there that you're going to see the Arcanite skull clap, yeah. skull cap show And I'm show actually... Up. I'm okay with them reprinting that because it is actually in high demand. Every, yeah. Every, when I went to the Flesh and Blood Calling event, they were talking about how everybody was buying it out. Yep. Yeah, I bought my one rainbow foil of it like a while ago for like 120 or 130 or something like that. And now it's like 300 or something like yeah, that. Kind of, well, it was 300 at the event. I don't know if it's 300. I don't know if it's 300 online. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I haven't even been searching. Demand. They needed their skull clap cap now. That's yeah. the difference between buying it at an event and buying it online. But it is a pretty good card though. Just being able to pitch and prevent that arcane damage oh, yeah. is, is definitely really nice. Yep. So anyways, yeah, these nifty little boxes right here with the nifty little red that says unlimited, these suckers right here are now out of print. And, you know, that's that's a big discussion on if that is good, is that bad? Well, I think it, it, it's, it's actually bad in a way because Arcane Rising is so good, right? Yeah, it is a very good set, actually. So the of EV the, of the boxes is even pretty decent, honestly. Exactly. One of the things about uh, Arcane Rising is actually the EV actual price per box if i was going to say uh, which box i would want to still have unlimited it'd be arcane rising it's definitely not any of the other boxes this is one that has the highest i believe ev mm -hmm. you open it yeah it is definitely something that is very worth it very worth looking into very worth purchasing um so i, I actually have something special also here for you guys i just recently completed um it's basically like my collection, like in a similar way to what I used to do for the magic cards, but I did it for flesh and blood. And I got like all the cards like organized where I had play sets of things, yep. figured out exactly what I had. And I didn't have like a big fancy tool to use, so I just used an Excel spreadsheet. And so we can actually maybe even make this available to you guys if you guys want to use this spreadsheet as well. Exactly. We can try to we can try to do that. If once we get time. We have to have time, yep. and then we can do it. So, yeah, I'll show you what I got here. So, yeah, it's an Excel spreadsheet, and you look at the tabs down here at the bottom. You've got Welcome to Wrath, Arcane Rising, Crucible, Monarch, and Tales of Aria. And what you got for each of these guys is the actual card number is listed right at the top. And for the ones that, that I either have or I've entered, you know, if there's a pitch value, I've got the pitch value listed. Or if it's like a hero or a weapon or if it's equipment. And then, you know, for my personal collection, like how many of them I've actually got. And so this is really nice because I could use this like a checklist. And so I've got this for each of my individual sets. We'll come back to this one. But as you can see, like I have my whole inventory for all these sets is all filled out. And I'll just scroll through these last two real quick. Here's my Monarch. You can see that you know, there's a lot of entries in there. And there's the Tales of Aria. So I know exactly what I've got. I'm literally going for play sets just in the exact same way that I was doing. Oops, oh, I did it wrong click. There we go. The exact right. same way that I was doing that beforehand, I'm going for like play sets of cards. Well, when the Tales of Aria out of print was announced. Not Tales of Aria, Arcane Rising. Sorry, Arcane Rising. 
I shot right to uh, my spreadsheet and I looked at it to see like, okay, what exactly am I missing? And if I come in here and look, so if I go to the Arcane Rising, all these ones that are listed in green were the ones that I was missing having copies. So I went straight to um, TCG Player, and by the way, you guys should be using that uh, that link that we've got below in our video. Yep. All your purchases on, T on TCG Player, please click the link and use that. We'll get a small kickback and it won't cost you any more. Exactly. So anyways, I, uh, I went to TCG Player and I purchased uh, play sets, or at least if it's like an equipment, like one of, for each of these cards that I was missing. And so here's my order right here. I've got like all the listing like right there of everything that I paid. And some of them, of course, you know, were pretty expensive. You know, like, you know, the Storm Riders and stuff like that or Sonic Boom or something like that. But Sonic Boom! <laughs> but anyway, so the point is I ran out as quick as I could as soon as they announced that out of print and I purchased like all the ones that I was missing so I could have the play sets of Arcane uh, Rising. So, and I think that I caught it in time that they hadn't... People had updated um, the legendaries and they'd updated the fabled, like the Eye of Ophidia. Yeah, but they hadn't actually updated like all the smaller cards. So I think I was able to get like most of them at like a pretty decent price. There you go. That's but, a good job. But it's, it's, so yeah, so I was able to like not, you know, get screwed, I guess, in a sense. In a sense. But when they put this thing out of print, they effectively put it right into the hands of speculators now. Yeah, exactly. Which is like, isn't that why Unlimited is supposed to exist? So you don't have speculators running into the game pieces? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yeah. And that's the confusing part. Because we had, a, it's like when Magic the Gathering was doing their Unlimited. Unlimited wasn't Unlimited. But then we have Arcane Rising. And it's, un, it's not Unlimited. But it will have reprints. Similar to Magic the Gathering, right? We'll always yeah. have our reprints and we're always going to have them. So all of these cards in here, none of them are reserve list. Yeah. They're all going to be reprinted again. So it's it's only like if people wanted the first printings of them. Exactly. So first edition should be the most highly regarded. Yeah. But now Unlimited actually might carry some decent value to it. Because exactly. Over time. Those are like, you know, it's, it's almost exactly the same. And like when you look at first edition versus Unlimited, they look really similar. It's very, hard very, to very tell. Similar. Unless you're looking at like you know Rainbow WTR World. and like the red the red is now pink well, or something yeah, yeah. like that. That's but different. That's good. Most of the time, like you can't really tell. No. When you're looking you at. You have to look at that down low with the little tiny script at the bottom. But it really makes me wonder. I mean, like, why did Legend Story Studios even want to do Unlimited if they're going to like basically put it right into the hand of speculators yeah, now? See, see, I don't understand why they have Unlimited now, anyways, if they have such a large volume of first edition. Right? Yeah, that's another big thing. Like, I really feel like they overprinted when they first printed, edition. When they printed Arcane Rising, okay, it kind of makes sense. The Arcane Rising boxes, first edition, very low print run. Uh, they were sold like crazy, very high demand. Exactly, and they're they're really high in price because of that first edition quality, right? Yeah. But and then they had the unlimited, and that at that point made sense. Then we had yeah. Tales of Aria. It doesn't make much sense anymore because we have a first edition print run. Yep. That is, like, guess large. And then we have Unlimited, released right now, and they're basically borderline the same price. Yeah, like, you just found um, a cold foil for, like, 160 bucks, or you could get the Rainbow Foil well, Unlimited for 140. 140 They're, like, almost the same price. So it doesn't, that doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So that, that makes me look at it and think, like, why even have first edition? If well, that's the yeah, kind of thing exactly. you're going to do. If, if, if there's no real point to first edition anymore. If unlimited is going to be large and first edition is going to be large, what's the point? I don't get it. So there is no real collector value as far as, you know, investment purposes or whatever. Yeah. Right? I've also thought about something else. When I open a box of Arcane Rising, I get a lot of commons, right? I get tons of different commons. Yeah. There's only about 100, but I get a slew of the same common over and over again. And I can fill out a pretty much a set almost yeah. in commons with yeah. just one yeah. case. So my theory is they should really remap this box. So where you can just buy the commons and uncommons, you can get rid of all this bulk. They'll be able to ship it a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. And then only ship like these tinier boosters that have your 
uh, mythics, mythics and, and legendaries, legendaries. And maybe the super rare. rares. No, just the yeah, the super rares, or maybe just the one rare in each pack guaranteed, or yeah. and you have these really tiny packs with one foil, and so then you have these nice small packaging, yeah, and then you'll have this little tiny box that you can just get your set of commons and stuff, yeah, because I'm getting tons of bulk if I start opening. Yeah, it's like the same problem with Pokemon. I mean, the reason like Pokemon competitive decks are cheap is because collectors are cracking boxes like crazy, chasing those like very, very rare cards. Right. So you end up with like all this inventory, all this bulk of the very, like the, the normal playable cards. And so that ends up making them cheap. And then so Pokemon decks are just not very expensive. Right. So I guess from the player standpoint, that's, that's good because then players can get most cards they need. But... If the players end up needing like legendaries, oh, I don't know, maybe like a uh, Fandle's like spring tunic, right? Yeah. Or like like an Arcanite skull cap, something like that. Like, hey, if you actually need like a legendary card, now it's actually really hard to get, and people got to crack a lot of boxes to get them. Get one. Yeah. Yeah. So that changes that map again, it back towards like investment kind of side. Right. I don't know. I kind of feel like they can't really seem to decide what direction they want to go. I think they've pretty much decided to go with game pieces. And um, they're just going to keep pinning boxes like this. And there'll be first edition, a whole lot more. And yet the player base will only expand a little bit. Because the game is legitimately fantastic. Well, it's going to expand over yeah. time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The game is good enough to continue expansion. All right? Yep. Yep. And it continue to adopt new players. Yep. However, they're printing as if it's exponential. And I don't think it's exponential. Yeah, I don't think the growth at this point is exponential. But who knows, maybe like Magic, they'll hit a thing where like it like was booming for a while, then it cooled off for a bit, and then it suddenly boomed again. Like it just hit, like it, like it took like a breath and then like went on a second wave, a second big sprint of growth. Yeah. Who knows, maybe it will. The game is good enough for it. I'm sure of that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not to me. It's not about the game. It's actually about what they were originally intending and what they're currently doing. They definitely kicked investors and collectors right in the nuts. Right. So I think collectors and investors are pretty much pushed to the side. They are only supposed to buy individual cards, not boxes. Yeah, apparently not. Right. So not anymore, anyways. There's no real reason to invest in a box for investors. But you know what's weird about that weird, is like right? investors and collectors could have done the same thing. In fact, like to, to a very small extent, I did with like the unlimited print because I actually have cases of unlimited that I bought for like 60 bucks a booster box. Very cheap. I've got them like right there in my closet. Like, you know, a few, I don't have very many, just have a couple cases of like at 60 bucks a booster box. But now that Arcane Rising is out of print, Crucible's out of print. I mean, those are worth a lot more than 60 bucks a box. And yet, the first edition boxes are remaining stagnant. Yeah. I don't know. Weird world, guys. It's crazy. So, I don't really know what direction to go with it in terms of, like, investment or collecting. But at this point, like, I'm just going, me personally, I'm doing what I did with Magic. I'm getting play sets of cards. And so, the next one, obviously, that I need to go get is I need to go get, like, finish out my Welcome to Wrath. Because right. that hasn't been declared as out of print yet. So no. i got to go like nail those as hard as I can. Yes, you do. You need to nail it as hard as you can. As hard as you can. And also, like, there's a lot of Tales of Aria stuff that is just dirt cheap. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would suggest buying a bunch of the cold foils and that kind of stuff out of it. Because it is first edition. The box take a little while to go up. But those first editions, they're probably going to go up. Probably. They're individual cards. I mean, they're good cards, Passing too. In the box. Yep. That is my speculation. Because you have to open a lot of boxes to get those cards. Yep. And now, like, one quick throwback. I'm going to show you guys one of my collection binders here, actually. Um, I'll turn on this camera. Okay, so let's get this thing to focus. So I have a red collection binder because, you know, you have pitch mana in uh, this game is red. And now you see that I actually have, like, this binder has, like, all the fables and stuff. Like, you know, here's your Welcome to Wrath, Arcane Rising crucible uh here's your monarch here's your tales of aria your fables and of course with the, you know the rudy card and stuff this actually is you know my binder for the high-end expensive cards just the same as i did with like magic all my command and conquers except for like you know just like one is like index and stuff but anyways the reason why i'm showing you guys this is like we actually for our um our uh, members of our channel 
we actually made a video and we were like telling our, our people, all, all of our um, channel members to actually go pick up these these fabled and these legendary cards because we said for a while like they were way too cheap. Oh yeah. So uh, when we made that video, the hearts were going for like 170, 170. bucks a piece. Yep. The eyes were somewhere similar, and so were the shards, like 170 or something a piece. In fact, that's what I paid for like these ones. And now it's not that way anymore. Yeah. So now they to the moon. Yeah, they've basically opened up the door for speculators now. So now the shards are going for like 400. What are eyes at? Did you just look recently? Um, eyes are at 400, I believe. Oh, they are? Left, yeah. So yeah, like there you go, guys. So like, I mean, you're welcome to the people that are members of our channel. We made that private video and told you guys to go get them. And Hearts like, are still 300 it. or 289. Yeah, because th these are still officially not yet out of print. If you can find these guys for like 200 bucks, my gosh. I mean, at least make sure you've got one. <laughs> right make sure you've got one so you're gonna want it right so anyways um yeah tales of aria going out of print i don't really know if it's good or if it's bad it's no, no, probably it's, good for players for people who bought it it's it's uh this 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 arcane rising yeah sorry arcane rising did i just say tales of aria yeah, again you did, you i did. keep doing that that's impressive because usually i'm the one making mistakes yeah, that's kind of my thing, man. You're yeah, rude. and here I am, like just I'm I keep in my mind swapping those two. Errors. What is wrong with you? So, anyways, yeah, guys. I mean, go get the play sets you need of cards while they're cheap, because apparently this game isn't going to have the whole separation of collectors, investors, and no, players. It's just players now. It's all just kind of We're a players. mishmash together to some degree. Yeah. I don't know, but I think individual cards are good for a speculative investment. I think. Yeah, the, the really long rare term. ones. Over long term. The legendaries and the fabled and like the majestics. Definitely. Yeah, sure. those those can be good Sealed things to pick up. Sealed will go up. Sealed will go up. I believe that Tales of Ariel will increase in value um, as far as a, as a sealed box is concerned, right? Yeah. But remember, people will want case the first set. is always better than the box in this case. Yes. Case, always better than loose box. Yep, because if, if somebody it. opens up a case and they pull like a heart or something like that, then like the, the the other three boxes are definitely not gonna have it. They're right? Christmas presents. You send them away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a case is always better. In fact, that case that I just sold to somebody, of Crucible, like I put it right in the listing that like you guys no no you don't understand. Rudy let us go up to a fresh. You were there. Yeah. He let us go up to a fresh pallet, cut the strap, and then pick the cases that we wanted off of it. That's true. And so that those cases that those two I sold one. I still got the other. No idea what's in any of them, right? That is like really good provenance, effectively. Oh yeah, well, I yeah. Think they're rubies, but, you know, yep. It's all good. So, anyways, yeah. Um, go get your singles, guys. I mean, they're cheap, and they're being announced as out of print. So, I'd grab them while you can, yeah. effectively. And use the TCG Player app. You know the link below, and we'll get a Please. little kickback, and it'll help us out. We'll make more videos, and you'll be like. Wow, they're making more videos. That's fun. Yep. And if you've been watching this channel, please click the like button. You, I mean, you guys, it's so easy. Just please click the like button. It helps us out a ton. I'd really appreciate it if you do it. And talk about Taco Bell in the comments below and see if you like it. Or I, not. Like, I do like Taco Bell. So good. Okay. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Later, guys. Bye.